I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but even I make mistakes sometimes. Now that I'm in the swing of being a full-time YouTuber, my mornings are pretty routine. Wake up, grab an English muffin, stare lovingly at my beer fridge, and get my morning coffee brewing. Whether you're new to coffee or a seasoned nerd, Trade Coffee makes it simple to find the right roast to get your day started right. Their simple seven-step quiz will match you to the right roast and style based on how you brew and what you like. As much as I like spending 10 minutes mixing up a cocktail, I want my coffee ready on demand. Using a refillable pod is my go-to solution, and luckily there is no judgment from Trade for this or any other brewing method. An ounce of cream, roast on par with an imperial stout, whole bean, hold the decaf, and boom! The coffee I like, just the way I like it, delivered straight to my door instead of running down to the grocery store. Trade also has a first match guarantee, meaning if you don't like the coffee you receive, they'll replace it for you on the house. The first 100 people to visit drinktrade.com and use offer code craftcomp50 will receive 50% off your first bag and free shipping. That's drinktrade.com, offer code craftcomp50, or follow the link down in the video description. Cheers, guys. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. If only there were warning signs along the way, I could have potentially avoided this fairly costly mistake. Sitting next to me are, gosh, how many? 18 new hard drives. Well, not new, they're enterprise refurbished. But 18 hard drives that I didn't want to purchase, it was more, I kind of had to purchase them. Cast your mind back to last August, when I did a TrueNAS migration video in the midst of doing my own TrueNAS migration into a new 24-base server. At that time, I had moved in eight 8 terabyte HGST Enterprise drives, but I wanted something else to fill out the rest of my storage space. So I ended up purchasing 16 Seagate Constellation ES2 3 terabyte SAS drives. Now, it's pretty well documented that 3TB drives aren't the most reliable drives that have ever been made, especially the Seagate Constellation 3TB disks. According to Backblaze back in 2015, Seagate 3TB drives had a 47% failure rate over a three-year period. And that was back in 2015. We're in 2021 now. Hey, don't worry about it, the little voice in the back of my head said. It'll be fine. This'll never happen to you. You have good luck when it comes to hardware reliability. Now, the way I manage drives in my server rack is for every eight physical disks that I have installed, I have at least one cold spare of the same capacity sitting on the shelf. That way, if I do have a drive failure, I'm able to very quickly swap out that disk and repair the array. In the case of the Seagate Constellation 3TB drives, I had 16 of those installed in my TrueNAS server, which means I also purchased two spares to sit on the shelf. And as it turns out, that wasn't nearly enough. Yes, in the nine months that I've been running this server, I've had seven drives fail, which is just a little under one per month. And in fact, in one case, I had two disks fail simultaneously. So if nothing else, this video should serve as a public service announcement. I know Seagate Enterprise 3 terabyte drives are cheap. I picked them up for about $20 per disk, giving me a pretty good amount of storage for only about $400. However, they're not reliable enough to run in a home server. So what's in the box? Uh, 18 HGST 4 terabyte SAS drives, which hopefully will put all of my problems at ease. So the plan for today is to take all of the Seagate Constellation drives out of my TrueNAS server, swap in the HGST 4 terabyte drives, create two new disk pools, and then hopefully restore all of my data from backup. Now, I do keep regular checks on my backups and they have been running. And in fact, I ran one just an hour ago to make sure it was completely up to date. So uh, fingers crossed here that everything's gonna go swimmingly. I'm sure it will. I have great luck with hardware. So let's go ahead and jump onto my TrueNAS server right now. And you can see at the moment, I already have another degraded drive. So that is actually number eight that I would be replacing. However, I'm not going to replace that disc. Well, I am. I'm just gonna replace all of them. First thing I wanna do is actually go to my backup server and verify that all of the data is in the backup. So I'm gonna go down to tasks and then down to replication tasks. And I can see that all three tasks are in the finished state, which means they have successfully run. And in fact, if I go up to task manager, you can see the run that I ran just a short while ago. The two pools in question are the NCC74210 or the Valiant pool, as well as the NX74205 or the Defiant pool. Yeah, I'm a bit of a DS9 junkie. 
Still on the backup server, I'm gonna go down to storage and then click on pools, and you can see there is a good amount of data on all of these disks. Now I'm not gonna be able to tell just from the size of the disk what data is there and what data is not, because I actually have a longer retention policy on my backup server than I do on my primary server. So these are actually going to be larger data sets than what exists on the current TrueNow server. But you can see the Valiant server has about five terabytes in use and the Defiant server has about eight terabytes in use. And that's honestly a pretty good value for me to go off of as long as that data set is larger than my original data set, I'm probably good to go. And I do verify these backups from time to time. So I'm gonna go back to the TrueNAS server and we are going to get rid of the offending disks. First, I'm gonna go down to pools I'm going to click on the settings tog for the Valiant server, and I'm going to export or disconnect this disk. We're going to delete configuration of shares used in this pool, and I'm going to confirm and export the disconnect. Now I could also destroy all of the data on this pool, but I'm not gonna go quite that far yet. What I'm going to do is pull these disks, set them aside, then do my restoration onto the new drives. Only then will I go through and completely wipe the old disks. This drive has two SMB shares, which I will need to recreate later, but I think at this point I am ready to uh, kick these to the curb. So go ahead and export. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the Defiant server pool. So I'm going to, again, go down to export and disconnect. I'm going to confirm that. And you can see I have my software directory and my Proxmox backups here. And that looks good to me. Export and disconnect. And once that's done, the only storage pool that I have left is my primary one with all of my craft computing data on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and head out to the garage and pull all the drives out of that server. And I'm going to keep them in groups of drive pools. And the way I assigned my disks was I have a 24 bay storage server. The two top rows are my Defiant server. The next two rows are my Valiant server. And then the bottom two rows are my craft computing server. So I'm going to keep all the disks together just in case the backup doesn't go quite as planned. But don't worry, it's gonna go as planned because I have really good luck with hardware. Oh, and something something, RAID is not a backup. All right, so here are my two stacks of eight drives, and I think my lovely assistant here is gonna help me out getting all of these trays swapped out. What do you say, Ram? Yeah? No? No. So much for my office assistant. All right, I guess you get to watch for about 30 seconds while I time-lapse the crap out of this. Alright, so that's uh, half the drives done. Uh, it only took me about 16 minutes too, or about one minute for each of these and about one minute for each of these. Uh, if you want to know what it's like to do all 16 drives, I guess just watch that time lapse again, because I don't think I need to film it twice. Plan for getting each of these back up and running. I'm actually going to go install these into the server right now and get the pool configured for the Valiant side of things. Once that pool is configured, I'm going to do the same thing for the Defiant drives and reconfigure the new pool there as well. That way, geographically, where the drives are at in the server makes sense to how I assign them. All right, I will be right back. back in the house now and all of the drives are now installed into the server. So let's go ahead and jump back over to TrueNAS and let's get these configured into a new drive pool. So I'm gonna go down to storage and pools. I'm gonna click on add and then create new pool. I'm gonna select all eight of those new disks and add them to the pool. We're gonna name this craft NCC 74210 for the USS Valiant. I'm gonna make sure this is in a RAID Z2 and we'll get about a 22 terabyte capacity out of this pool with a two drive fault tolerance. That means I can lose up to two disks and the data will still remain intact. And if everything looks good, which it does to me, I'm gonna click on create. 
I'm gonna confirm and create pool. And there we go, we have a new drive pool. Now that my storage pool is all configured on this end of things, I'm gonna go swap the other eight disks back into my server and get that data set set up off camera because I don't think there's a reason to show all that process twice. All right, I hope that didn't take nearly as long for you as it did for me. But now that I have all of my storage pools created, it's time to start on the restoration process. For that, I'm gonna jump over to my backup server, go down to storage and then down to pools. And then I'm gonna create a new snapshot for the two pools that I'm going to restore. Again, that is my Defiant and my Valiant storage pools. So I think I'm gonna start on the Defiant. I'm gonna click on the little three dots right here and go to create snapshot. By default, the snapshot will have a name of manual followed by the date and time. However, I'm going to give this a very clear name so I know exactly what the purpose of this snapshot is. So I'm going to say restore-nx-74205. And I'm gonna make sure this is a recursive snapshot to make sure I get everything down below the main data set. And if that looks good, go ahead and hit create snapshot. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the Valiant Snapshot. So create snapshot, restore, NCC 74210. Make it recursive and create. Luckily, taking an initial snapshot doesn't take hardly any time at all. So we're gonna start the restoration process now by going to tasks and then down to replication tasks. Now these three tasks in the backup server are actually pulling the data from my original and main TrueNAS server into the backup server. However, I'm gonna create tasks that do essentially just the opposite, and that is push this data back to where it belongs. So right behind my face here, I'm gonna click on add a new task. Under source location, I'm gonna say on this system, and I'm gonna start again with the defiant storage pool. So I'm gonna click that right there, and then I'm gonna click on recursive again to make sure we get all of the subdirectories and data sets inside of there. For the destination location, I'm gonna click on on a different system. And since we already have an SSH connection established to my main server, I can just go ahead and click on that. Then under the drop-down menu, I'm gonna select the same exact directory on the main TrueNAS server. Now, one advantage that I have between these two servers is there's actually just one cable running from one network card into the network card of the other server, meaning the backups don't actually ever traverse my network. As such, I'm not going to bother with doing encryption because the data is never technically in flight over the network. However, if it is, encryption is definitely recommended. After that's all set up, I'm gonna click on next, and this is just gonna be a one-time restoration. So I'm gonna click on run once, we're gonna make sure that this is not checked as this will not be a read only as I want to actually use the data once I'm done with the restoration. And if everything looks good, go ahead and click on start replication. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the Valiant storage pool. So again, I'm gonna go source location on this system. We're gonna select the Valiant disks, click on recursive. I'm gonna go down to destination on a different system, select my TrueNAS server, and then go down to the Valiant storage pool, click on no encryption, next, run once, and make sure it's not read-only, I almost missed that, and start replication. All right, as I have about, oh, 20 or so terabytes of data to sling across the network, this process is going to take a little while. I'll probably do a quick little thing in the outro showing that the data is actually being restored or hopefully is fully restored first thing in the morning. But I think that's gonna do it for today's video. If you like this one, make sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you use for a backup system. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing on your way down there. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans or problems like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and wanna help support me in what I do, like when I buy hard drives that end up failing six months later, think about joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are both down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server where you can talk directly with me as well as the other hosts from Talking Heads. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Here for today is from Matchless Brewing Company up in Tumwater, Washington. This is the Hopper Hazy IPA. Obviously a uh, Frogger inspired brew. 6.2%.
It does kind of make sense that a beer based on frogs would be a little bit hazy, doesn't it? Oh, wow, that is fruity and sweet. Yeah, yeah, that is very fruity, like a berry kind of fruit, not the normal citrus. Uh, very fruity and very sweet. But unfortunately, I can already tell this is gonna drink exactly like every other hazy that I've ever had, where I'm really enjoying it this far. 